What's up, guys? Peace and blessings. Peace and blessings. Mark the Messenger. We're back with another video. Uh, this one's going to be about seven reasons why I left the Christian church. And before I even started this video, so it's not causes no confusion, I am a Christian. Okay, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. I believe in the God of Israel, the Most High God. Okay, so let's make that very clear. A uh, quick background: I grew up at a ch I grew up in the church um, since I was a baby. You know, my mom had me in the church. My mom and dad had me in the church every Sunday until the age of like fifteen or sixteen, somewhere on there. And uh, you know, um, even though like I was, I would go to church every Sunday for decades. I didn't know what the truth was. I didn't know what sin was. I didn't know about keeping commandments or keeping God's commandments. I didn't even know who Jesus was, guys, until in my early 20s, okay? So the church wasn't really teaching us anything. It was just more of a, like, we have to, you know, the program, right? The program, the matrix is you have to go to church to show that you love God, which is completely false because the Bible says if you want to show that you love God, you got to keep his commandments. Okay, the church never taught me that. So that's why I left the church. And that's going to go with number seven. But let's get, let's go. Number one, okay, the traditions of men. One thing about, now, of course, is all, are all churches, all, all Christian churches like this? Absolutely not. Are most of them like this that I'm going to go over? Absolutely yes. Okay, I've been to over 10, 15 churches. And I want to say there was probably maybe only one or two churches. And the funny thing about those two churches, they didn't even speak English. So it was like my mom's African, so I wasn't able to understand their language. But you could tell when someone's anointed. You could tell when you feel the Holy Spirit presence around someone, but I wasn't able to understand their language because um, I was never taught to greenness. So, um, but the traditions of men, Easter, Halloween, Christmas, I have, um, I made multiple videos talking about the subjects, but those are all linked to paganism. You know, the churches, they taught us that Christmas is Jesus' birthday, false. Uh, they taught us that, oh, we get to celebrate Halloween because, you know, it's just for the kids and, you know, you have, you know, Halloween, people dress up like witches. People dress up like, you know, warlocks and the devil, you know, demons. And, you know, it's just demonic. No Christian, no one who's of the light who should be putting on, you know, any type of costumes. It's all pagan origins. Also with Easter, um, that could be a long video. But pretty much Easter is not, um, you know, if you want to celebrate Jesus' resurrection, it's the Passover. That's biblical. Easter is nowhere mentioned in the Bible. Like I said, I have multiple videos on this. And I talk about this on my Instagram page a lot. So if you want to look more into that, go ahead and check that out. But one thing I noticed about the church system is that it's all about the traditions of men. You know, like I said, all, all churches like this, absolutely not. But a lot of them are. A lot of them follow these, the 501c3s. A lot of them follow the ways of the system. Okay, so that's one reason why I left the church system is the traditions of men. And I, I mean, I could go on with that, but it's mostly with these pagan holidays. And I just couldn't get down with that. You know, if God says that goes, if that goes against his word, and this church is promoting it, am I going to be that blind sheep, that disobedient sheep that knows, you know, to depart, but I'm just going to stay because, you know, I want to please God. But like I said, guys, if you want, how do you show you love God according to the Bible is by keeping his commandments. Number two, is watered down messages no truth. Okay. Like I said, are all churches like this? Absolutely not. But most of them are. The ones I would go to, a lot of them are like that. Okay. Uh, the watered down messages, I, you know, like, I want to hear about repentance. I want when I'm at a church service, guys. Now, of course, it doesn't have to be every service, but when I go to, you know, occasionally, I want to feel convicted. Especially back when I was still in the world, back when I was still in willful sin, I want to feel convicted. I want to feel like, dang, I, you know, I got to change. Uh, dang, like, you know, I got, I want to, I, I want to have to change. When I go to church every Sunday, guys, I was getting that ear tickling message. Okay, I wasn't getting the need to, damn, I need to repent. Dang, you know, I, I got to confess my sins. Uh, you know, dang, I got to start doing things to that's going to get me to, you know, change my ways. I didn't feel that way during church, guys. I didn't I didn't know what sin was. Uh, I didn't know what repent was. I didn't know what any of those type of things were, guys, until I got older, until I left the church, when I actually started to read the Bible for myself. And that's why it's important, guys, to study to show yourself approved. Because when you study to show yourself approved, you can't be led astray by a, a false prophet, a false teacher, because you know the word for yourself. Okay. The churches weren't t telling us or telling me, at least I, can't, I can't speak for everyone else, but for me, they weren't telling me about keeping God's commandments. Okay. They weren't telling me about the certain sins. Uh, like, especially me, I was in bondage to smoking. No one, no, none of the pastors said that, you know, was preaching against, you know, smoking weed. Like I said, not all pastors, so don't leave it in the comments, okay? If your church is doing it, more power to you. But for the churches that I went to, the 5, 10 plus, okay, no one was really, you know, it was just more just like religious, like like legalism, bondage, okay? And, you know, there's a lot of sins that people are suffering with. 
you know, battling with it. They don't even know it's a sin, just like me. We don't know it. Some, some guys, we were, all of us guys in the past, we were fools. Okay, so there was really no truth. There was more just ear tickling and it just didn't feel, I didn't feel the Holy Spirit, guys. I didn't feel the Holy Spirit in a lot of these churches, man. Number three is God doesn't dwell with temples made with hands, okay? Now, when I started to read the Bible for myself and I read that verse, that verse really hit me because it made me it made me realize that, okay, God doesn't go to dwell with temples made with hands. So, you know, them telling us that going to church to show you love God, not just the churches, you know, our family would tell us this. You know, you have to go to church to show you love God. You have to go to church to show that, you, you know, you want to seek him. It's like, no, God dwells within you. If you want to seek God, you got to seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, which dwells within you. The kingdom dwells within you. You don't have to go to church to show you that you love God or please God. The Bible makes it clear. I'll leave a verse right here that God does not dwell with temples made with hands. So just because you don't go to church doesn't mean anything. Doesn't mean anything. Okay. He doesn't do all the temples made with hands. And that hit me. Even the Bible says that, um, that he dwells within us. So we're not supposed to defile the temple of God. Okay. So we're not supposed to commit like, you know, certain sins, like, like, you know, fornication, um, you know, homosexuality, you know, certain things because we're defiling the temple of God within us. Uh, of course, we're under grace. So if we do that, we're not going to just be destroyed. But if we keep keep on doing it, the Bible does say that, you know, him, God will destroy for you are holy. The temple of God dwells within you. So God, the Holy Spirit dwells within within us. Okay. It's not in the temple. It's not in the house. You know, and that's something that they never taught me that I never taught. I had to read the Bible for myself, bro, for me to realize that. Okay. And see, the reason why these churches, most of these churches won't bring that to light because they'll realize that, oh, this person's waking up. Now I'm going to lose money. This person's not going to show up to my, you know, they, you know, a lot of churches, guys, especially like the mainstream churches. Okay. They just look at people like, like, like money, you know, it, it's sad, but it's the truth. You know, if they, that's the reason why they don't preach the truth because they know if they preach the truth, you ain't going to show up. They're going to start losing money. And I'm not here to condemn them because, you know, they need money to pay the light bill. They need m money to pay the rent, whatever the case may be. But, you know, they should understand that, which is going to go with number four. If you're doing the work of God, you're doing the, 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 the if you're doing, you know, seeking God's kingdom and preaching to the, sh the sheep. And even though if you're, you know, there's only hardly any people there, God will supply your needs. You don't have to worry about money. But when you have the love of money in you, then that's when you start to dumb down your morals, your character, your principles in order to conform to people. And then now you just want, you know, your focus is on money. Your focus is on no longer on saving souls, winning people for Christ. And so it's just about money, money, which is what leads man to damnation. Okay. Number four is a push fear if you don't, if you don't title offerings. Okay. Yes. Push fear is a uh, pastor. Some of you guys probably already heard of him, McCreffle Dollar. He came out and said that um, the tiling doctrine that was false, okay? And not only him, there's many, I have this, you know, testimony I'll talk about right now. I think this is the last time I went to church. The last time or the, the, the second to last time? And um, this was like after I started in the Bible. So it was like, I don't know why. I was just led, I just felt like I was led to go to church for whatever reason. Okay, this is like in 2019. And the pastor... Uh, I got baptized at this church. This pastor, when I first got in there, and the first 30 to 45 minutes, he was just talking about how we should give money to the church. And I always give money because it's nothing, you know, I, I understand even before I was a teacher, like you're feeding, you know, the pastor, or at least not all of them, but the pastor, someone who God has ordained, they're feeding us spiritually. So there's no reason, there's no issue for me to not give $5 or $10. That's nothing, you know, but the problem is when you, when you, for you, you know, the, ser the sermon's usually about like an hour and a half, two hours, right? But when you when you use half of that time to talk about, to instill fear into people, if they don't give you money, if they don't give you a title, or God's not going to bless you if you don't like, God, that's, that's false, guys. Okay, we're in the Bible does it say that. Now, the Bible does say that God loves a cheerful giver, okay? But it doesn't say that you're going to be damned to hell or, you know, you, you should never have instill fear because you don't want to pay someone because they're, you know, ministering to you or because, you know, they're feeding your spirit. That should be something that you give, you know, freely. Okay. You should never, and I said, not all churches do this, but some churches will instill fear in you because you're not paying them. Like I said, guys, you don't have to, as, as if you're like a shepherd of God, right? You don't have to worry about money because God will supply you in all your needs. You don't have to instill, push fear into people to force you to donate, to force you to give you money. Like that's not, that's not right. To me, that's not righteous. Okay. You know, and like I said, there's a pastor, a mainstream pastor, Creflo Dollar. He came out and even admitted that that's false teaching. Okay. Uh, you can go look this up yourself. Okay. Number five is religious spirits. Okay. Who were Jesus's enemies, guys? Okay. Jesus was set apart. We are called to be a set apart. I'm going to talk about that in number seven. Okay. But we're, we're set apart, right? Who were Jesus' enemies? Religious spirits. Pharisees. Now, of course, that wasn't his only enemies. The Romans were his enemies. 
um, you know, a man's enemies will be in his own household, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But religious people were his enemies. So when God calls you out of this world, okay, to be set apart, to be holy, okay, your enemies are not going to be religious spirits, okay, going to be people of the church. Okay, now, you know, and I have um, many brothers who told me that I had to find a different church because once God called them to be set apart, you know, some of them they didn't, they didn't, they didn't ever return back to the church. It's like me. I, I never returned back to the church. Once God called me apart, I went back to church once and it reminded me why I should never go back again. Okay, so the religious spirits, they're going to be your enemies, guys. I'm telling you guys, religious spirits will be your enemies when you're chosen by God, when you're set apart. They're going to, because the way God has, has, you know, instructed you, has formed you, it's going to go against their program. Everything is a program. Okay, it goes against their program. I don't believe in celebrating Easter. I don't believe in uh, eating pork. I believe that we have to keep God's commandments. I believe that, you know, um, we're not supposed to celebrate Halloween, quit uh, Christmas, um, the, you know, the list goes on. I don't believe in other, I believe in the Holy Bible. I don't believe in, um, the, the Mormonism, uh, Jehovah witness, uh, Catholic, all that. I don't believe in that type of stuff. So these people, these religious people are going to be your enemies, guys. I'm telling you, bro, who is Jesus? Remember, what did Jesus tell us? What did he, what did he warned us that if they hated me, they'll hate, they hate you. And the servant is not better than the master. So if you're a servant of Christ, okay, if you're a servant of Christ, you are not better than him. So who was his enemies? Religious people. So if when you're a true servant of Christ, your enemies who are going to be not it's going to be religious people, but it's going to be uh, the whole world's going to hate you. Okay, the whole because that light is beaming, and it bothers these people who are in darkness. It bothers these people who don't have no love for their brother, no love for their sister, no love for their neighbor. It bothers them. The demons. Okay, number six, they never want you to grow past them. That's one thing I noticed before I went to, when I started going to church when God was calling me. Okay. I noticed these people were trying to like control me. And that's a form of religious spirit. They're trying to control you. It's like the Bible, like they, they made it going to church to feel like it was like a school. They tested me and stuff like that. Like, bro, people should want to see God for themselves. You should never try to force someone. You should never try to force someone to read the Bible, force someone to go to church. So that's just some, someone should be, you know, wanting to see God themselves. But these religious spirits, they try to control you and see when the controlling doesn't work, they start telling lies. They start telling lies. They start to belittle you. Okay, but aren't we supposed to love like Christ? We're not supposed to put people down because they're in a different stage of the walk than you. Okay, God God humbles the, the God humbles the people who try to exalt themselves, and he and he um he exalts those who humble themselves. Okay, so always understand that. That's one thing I notice about pe church people. Like I said, I gotta make this very clear. There's always that one person in the comments. Okay, not everyone is like this. Okay, but through my experiences, through my testimonies, I notice they never want you to level past, and they want to control you. They want to keep you stagnated. And I, heck, now I'm a, God, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a bird. I'm flying. I want to fly. I want to level up in life. I'm not trying to stay at the bottom. And I want all my people who subscribe to my channel, all my people who watch my videos, I want you to level up too. I, I hope and pray that there's people who watch my videos, guys, who plant a seed and they become bigger than me. I have no jealousy, no envy in my heart. Okay, this is all about winning souls for Christ. This is not a competition. You know, this, I have no jealousy in me, bro. So I know with the people in the church, they don't want you to grow past them. They don't want you to level up past them. And they got to go, bro. Number seven, because God called me out of her. Okay, Revelation chapter uh, 12 or 18, verse two to four. Okay, so it says, um, oh, I'll just read verse uh, four. Okay, so it says, and I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins and that you receive not her plagues. I've been telling you guys that these churches, not all of them, but a lot of these churches, they're going to start to be promoting when that comes out, some of them are already having, you know, the, the centers for people to get that. But when that, when the mark of the, you know, comes out, I'm telling, I'm telling you guys, that a lot, not all the churches, of course, but some of these churches is going to be a center where you could get it. I'm telling a lot of people, a lot, 501c3, look it up. Make sure the church that you go to is not a part of that. That's linked to the government. Okay. God called me out of the church. Now, hey, guess what? I'm reaching more people than these churches, even though these people casted their stones on me condemned me you know i remember there was one there was uh one people one people at the church members telling me i have to cut off my beard it's legalism oh uh mark you have dreads but you know they, they would give me one corinthians chapter 11 verse 14 it says do not nature teach you that if a man have long hair it's ashamed him but they don't read the next verse verse 16 but if any man seem to be continuous we have no such custom neither the churches of god they will never read that verse it's all about control so come out of her come out of the babylonian system just like I did, Antonio, you're going to level up. Now, you're going to be alone. You're going to feel lonely. 
but God is with you. Always understand that. I love you guys so much. If you haven't already, make sure you all smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, share this video on all social media platforms. I'm out. Peace.